How we doing? Welcome to the first ever Birger box cooking. Who's all there? Karen. We got and Karen. Uncle Jim. Oh, and Karen and Uncle Jim. Nice. And Anna Wilma. What state are you? What's oh, Anna and Wilma? What state are you guys in? Michigan. Kalamazoo, Michigan. Michigan. There we are. We got them. Who else is in the chat right now? Hi, Chris. It's Amy and Alex. Oh, hey. <laughs> and what state are you guys in, Amy? Oh, we're in Pennsylvania in Pittsburgh. Wonderful, wonderful. So just with so everybody my, knows I... With my brother-in-law and sister-in-law. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this is going to be a blast. You guys are going to eat some great, great food here. I'm nervous as can be if anybody can't tell. So I just don't want to chop a finger off while we're cutting potatoes, you know? Um, so this so, is where Amy and Alex's, uh, well, brother, sister, in-laws, all that family. Awesome. So it's a giant party happening down there. They have the fringes in here. Oh, I hear, I hear, I hear a Trista talking. Is that a Trista? It is. Hi, Trista. What state are you guys in? West Virginia. <laughs> there we go. There it is. <laughs> so, so just so everybody knows, I am recording this to post to YouTube later. So if you don't want your video feed showing on that, on that YouTube video, you can disconnect your video from zoom and just have your audio playing so you can talk to me and ask questions and stuff like that so uh so just so everybody knows that um who else we got in the in the chat room waiting you can see you so hi chris I, who's that <laughs> that's uncle jim oh that's uncle jim <laughs> so i i have my beautiful assistant over here so if i keep looking here she's She's giving me cues to look where because she's controlling all the cameras that are around us. So uh, I see. Yeah. So um, so is anybody else in the chat room that needs to uh, let me know you're there? Because I can't see him. My beautiful assistant. Merle and Heather. Merle and Heather. Hey, Merle all right. and Heather. What? Hey guys. <laughs> what state are you guys in? Pennsylvania. And oh, good. good. Just ourselves. making sure you weren't in that that weird New York state that you go to. <laughs> Too expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Who else we got? I saw somebody named the grape in the waiting room. Who would that be? Nope. We don't know. Oh, Jim. How about Ralph's iPad? Here. I saw somebody. Uh, there he is. <laughs> I saw Ralph's iPad waiting there, just waiting there to get in there and eat some burgers. So, um, so a couple things to start off. Is that everybody? Did we? Is that everybody we got? Shelly? Is there a Shelly? That's uh, Jimmy and Shelly. Yep. Oh, wonderful. Okay, perfect. All right. So. Uh, a couple things to start off with, um, if you got the, the to-do list, the must-have list. So you want to have your oven, go ahead and preheat your, pre your oven to 425 degrees, um, if you haven't already. So go ahead and pop that over to 425. And then uh, you're going to want your potatoes, because we're going to start with the potatoes first, because they take the longest to cook. Um, and you're going to want your thyme and your butter and your chicken broth. And you're gonna want a, either a cast iron pan to cook the potatoes in or an oven safe pan because they're gonna cook on top of the stove and then go right into the oven after that before we start our burgers. So anybody have any questions on, uh, on the, oh, in a bowl of water. You're gonna want a bowl of cold water for the potatoes before we start to cook them. Anybody have any questions about, about anything there? No, I'm going to take that as a no. So um, for a little bit, when we start doing all the cooking, I'm going to mute. Uh, Carly, Carly's going to mute you, not me. Carly's going to mute <laughs> So you'll all be muted so that I can't hear you. But I'll just be talking and giving directions as I go. If you have like an immediate question that you're like, oh my gosh, what? Slow down or do something like that. Um, you can chat it in there. 
uh, into the chat box there. You can just type your question in there like, hey, can you slow down? Or uh, how did you cut that potato again? Why are we cutting it like this? Things like that. So if you have any questions and then after each portion, I'm gonna unmute everybody and then we'll go on a question answer phase. So, so if anybody has any questions, try to hold them to that. But if you have an immediate question, type it in the chat box. Cool? Oh, like the cool. We'll type. So what else we got here? <clears throat> you know, you're gonna want paper towels ready and a pair of tongs for the potato. And I'll explain why as soon as we get there. Um, your burger meat can stay in the refrigerator for right now. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and begin unless anybody has any other questions or anything like that. Nope, nope. everybody sounds good, wonderful. All right, maybe this will be easier than I thought. I thought there was gonna be full of questions. But, um, oh, what's the other thing? I just had another thought. I have talking points written down. <laughs> so that's also while I'm looking over here. Um, I think we're ready to go. So cutting board and I wanna go ahead and switch to cutting board feed. So you're gonna want your, your taters ready. Oh, actually, before we meet y'all, one more question. Um, how was everything packaged in your box? Did it, did it all come nice and organized? And was the burger meat still fresh and the buns not squished and all that kind of stuff? It was great. It was awesome. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Anybody else have any issues or anything? Nope. Nope. I thought it was really Perfect. impressive, Chris. Very impressive. Awesome. Right on. All right. Well, let's, let's cook some tighter, shall we? It's going to be a while. So, <laughs> you can go ahead and mute everybody and uh, we'll go right to it. So um, you're going to start with your potato on your cutting board. Grab your knife. It's always great to hold your knife with your thumb and index finger right here at the middle of the blade. Kind of gives you a little bit more control and rest on the rest your palm on the handle and let your palm do the work. So we're going to cut the ends off the potatoes first. Try to cut them as square as possible. Okay. And now once you have the ends cut off, you're gonna stand the potato up and you're going to peel the potato with your knife straight down. Now this may seem a little wasteful, but you'll kind of see where we're going with this. And then you're gonna kind of peel the potato as you go, trying to make, do the best as you can to create a cylinder shape with your potato. Now, obviously that depends on your potato because potatoes are wily creatures and they grow in whatever shape they want, but You'll just kind of do your best. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I think you're really going to like these potatoes. There's probably not a, this is a, a, an impactful way to make a potato. So if you have any parts like that, just kind of shave them right off. If you have any eyes, just kind of cut them out. And you just want your potato to be just, just pretty, you know, and cut out off that skin. It's okay if it's not perfect at the bottom. Uh, because you're going to have one pretty side and one kind of not as pretty side. So this is what you'll be looking at right here with your potato. So this is what you'll be looking at right here with your potato. And uh, that's not too bad. That's kind of round. And as the potato cooks, it's going to kind of, these, these pointy edges will kind of round out as it cooks because fondant means the melting potato. It's not going to melt though. Don't worry. So I'm using a smaller potato, so I'm just cutting in half, but you're gonna to wanna to slice your potato crosswick across about an inch and a half thick, okay? So that's about the size of your potatoes that you're gonna want. And you're gonna have a, a nicer side that you're gonna cook first and a not so nice side that'll be down, that'll cook second. So go ahead and take your potatoes that you cut and pop them in the water, okay? All right, off to the next one. So I'm only working with two potatoes, but I know some people are working with four. After I get done cutting this one, I'll open up the, uh, the audio so that you guys can ask questions while you're cutting. So again, cut the ends off and just kind of peel it all around with your knife. Now you may be thinking that this is a little wasteful and there's a lot of waste that happens in French cooking. So don't worry about it. It's okay. <laughs> a 
this isn't the perfect, well, that's a little better than the last one, but clean that up on the end. Uh, this is what you should have. You should have your potatoes in the water, just like this. And you wanna keep them in there for about five minutes. So while these are kind of resting in the water, we can go ahead over to the stove and we'll preheat our cast iron pan. So you just wanna do like medium, medium low, just because we got a few minutes to wait. So anybody have any questions on those potatoes? What do you think so far? Everybody good? Yeah. So far so good. We're, we're awesome. Ready. So have you ever made these potatoes before? Anybody? No. no. Awesome. Okay. So what do you think of this process, this whole cooking process so far with this live streaming thing? I think it's a lot of fun. All right. <laughs> good. I hope it's fun. Now that these have been... Your potatoes have been ready. Go ahead and have your paper towels ready. And you can come back to the cutting board if you're not there already, okay? And just pull your taters out of the water, kind of swish them around a little bit. And really we just use the water to rinse off all the starch. And since we're going to be putting them into a, putting them into a pan with hot oil, we wanna get as much water off of them as possible. Right there. Yeah. So get them all dried up. And then we will add our oil to the pan. Okay. Now, I think I've cooked this recipe in the last, since we started this whole thing, probably five times <laughs> in, the, in this last month. So I've eaten a lot of burgers just to, just to prepare for the whole live stream thing. Um, the workout has increased, the, the workout regimen. <laughs> but uh, yeah, all good. So our potatoes are dried up. Now we're gonna head over to, you can dispose of your bowl of water. You can head over to the pan and now we're gonna add some oil to our pan. And you want just about enough oil in your pan to cover the bottom, okay? So that looks good to me. I never measure things, so. But you just want to be able to cover around. And it'd be a good idea to have a towel handy or a hot pad so that you don't burn yourself on your cast iron if that's what you're using, okay? So we'll know that that oil is done when it starts to really shimmer, or not done, but it's hot enough, when it starts to really shimmer and run fluid like water. Okay, so we wanna have them hot so that as soon as we add our potatoes to the pan, the sizzling begins. So go ahead and have your potatoes ready on the side that you wanna cook first. This will be your presentation side. So the side that when you plate them will face up. So your pretty side. And we're not going to season them just yet. Everybody doing good? Yeah. Questions? Good. Awesome. Okay. So now my pan is about ready. How's everybody doing heating their oil up? You're good. All right. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and add mine in just to make sure it's, yep. What do you mean pretty side up? <laughs> Pretty, the pretty side of your potato. So if you've got a more of an ugly, see how this side has like a, like a little jagged to it. We're going to hide that and put this side up. Okay. <laughs> you always want your pretty side to go down first. What's that? Yeah, you should be hearing it sizzle and they should be bubbling up. Now, while we do that, let's go ahead and season the tops of our potatoes with salt and pepper. And it's okay to be generous here because they're pretty large potatoes and they're not getting any salt all over it. So we'll get more flavor from the butter and thyme and broth. Okay. So just 
salt and pepper. Yeah. All right. And now the boring part of just watching these potatoes in silence for the next five minutes. How about that? Just kidding. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and have our, you can come back to the cutting board. So while those are cooking, go ahead and get your three tablespoons of butter ready. I like to just cut it into cubes just so that it cook, melts a little bit faster when we add it to the pan. Last thing we want to do is wait for our butter to melt. First world problems, right? So we have our butter ready, we have our thyme, and you're gonna want your broth handy. And you're also going to want, I would say like a paper towel wadded into a ball like that. And your tongs ready. So you're gonna have your, your paper towel like this, but not just yet, okay? So that's, that's how we're gonna hold it in the very near future. So you're gonna hold the tongs like that. <laughs> All right. So our potato, what we wanna do with our potatoes now is just kind of wait until they're a really nice golden brown color. Um, you want them to be really nice and crispy. They're gonna be crispy on the tops and the bottoms. And then after they cook in the oven, they're gonna be like fluffy cakey pillows in the inside soaked with chicken broth, butter and thyme. So let's go ahead and give them a, Give them a look, not even close. <laughs> now, if you are using cast iron, mine has a little raised center. So some of these are starting to get brown, which looks great. Let me turn the heat up a little bit. But if you have that raised center in your cast iron, you can move them out of the oil and into that raised center at this point because they've soaked up enough oil and use that center straight contact to brown the taters a little quicker. Okay, at this point, you can go ahead and take your burger meat out of the fridge. And just so everybody knows, you're not muted at this point. So if you have questions, fire away. And you're gonna want a little, a plate to put your burger meat onto. Let's check and see how, yeah, we're looking a little better. How's everybody's potatoes looking? Yeah, that's what we want right there. And then flip them. Yeah, see, if they're looking like that, go ahead and flip them. And it's okay if they're not all there. Yeah. Those look great. I'm going to let that one cook a little bit longer. Now, after you flip them, go ahead and add some salt and pepper to the other side. When is the butter going? The butter goes in after we soak up the oil. Okay. We might be a little bit behind on the browning of the potatoes. No problem. Go at your own pace. I don't think I'm going to soak up all the oil with my potatoes. No, no, you're not going to. I'll show you. That's what your paper towel is going to be for. Well, I may have to flip before I soak up all the oil. Yes, you, you do have to do that. Okay, so I'm just going to throw the butter in. Oh, no, no, no. Did you soak up your oil yet? Well, <clears throat> no, but I'm pretty brown on the one side. Okay, that's okay. Go ahead and begin to soak. Did you salt and pepper your tops? Yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead and what you're going to do is you're gonna grab your paper towel in your tongs like this. Okay. And you're gonna move your potatoes up so they're out of the way. Tilt your pan up and okay. use your paper towel to soak up the oil like that. Okay. Because at this point your, your oil's done its job and we really don't need it anymore. It's okay if you don't get it all, it's not gonna hurt. It's just going to splatter a little bit when we go to add our butter and thyme and broth. So, whoop, I just lost an earphone. It went down my shirt. There we go. <laughs> okay, let me get that out of there. I'm gonna need a little bit more paper towels. Okay. 
Right. How's everybody looking? Where are we all at? Good. All right. We're looking good. Look at this. Nice. How's Ralph's iPad looking, Carly? Smiles. It smiles. We're, good. Ca we're catching Ooh, up. Very good. Awesome. <laughs> so now you're at the point. Well, if you're if you're right with me, if not, that's okay. Um, I'm at the point where we're going to add our butter. Okay. I had a little time stuck to that butter, but just ignore that. Okay, now this is probably the, th these, are so e these are so easy to make, but this is probably the most difficult part if you're colorblind like I am. So the butter, let that melt. See how it's all nice, the, the bubbles are all nice and yeah. white. When those bubbles start to turn like a chestnutty golden brown color, when that butter starts to turn that color, then we're going to add our thyme and our broth. Okay, so just keep a hold, keep an eye on your butter. And at this point, you can kind of move your potatoes around in the butter. You don't have to baste them. If anyone's and, wondering, the cast iron skillet handle does get hot. Yes, that's why I said you do want <laughs> a hot pad or a towel to hold the handle of your cast iron. <laughs> Especially if you have baby hands like that guy that just said that. You know? <laughs> okay, so see how, see about right here in the back of the pan where that's starting to turn like a golden golden color? Yeah. For right around here. We just want this white to turn that color a little bit more too. Okay. And what we're creating here is brown butter. So brown butter adds a whole different dimension. And what you can do also for anything else that you cook is you can just melt butter in a pan, wait till it gets brown, remove it from the pan and store it in your fridge and use that as a topping for toast or eggs or, or to cook anything else in. Because once it becomes brown, it adds a whole nother level of flavor, okay? So now that we're, we're starting to turn brown, go ahead and get your thyme yeah. in hand and your broth. So we're gonna go ahead and slowly, carefully pour in your broth. And it's okay if it bubbles up and does that, it's supposed to. Chris, did the time go in with the butter? The time's going in right now. Okay. Yep. So now that we're there, I'm just gonna slide this camera back and I'm gonna add a little bit more broth to my pan, but you're gonna add exactly how much was given to you. Okay, now go ahead and toss it in your oven at 425. It how should smell broth? amazing. How much broth? All the broth. All the broth, yep. You should have like a little eight ounce bottle, I think. So just one, Dad. Just one of them, Dad, just one. Well, if you're cooking all your potatoes, yeah. Yeah, you would, you would put it all in. All right, good. Thank you. Uh, all one yeah, no problem. Chris, all one container or two if you're putting all the potatoes in. Yep. If you're making all of your potatoes, I would go ahead and do both containers. So you, if you have, yeah. So if you if you're doing four potatoes, I would do two of those bottles. Daddy, can I open this one? Does that make sense? Daddy, can I yep. open this one? Awesome. Okay. So it goes in the oven, man. So give me this one. Yeah, and then you throw it in the oven as soon as you put the thyme and the broth in. And then we're gonna let that sit in there and just be happy. And those potatoes are gonna soak up all that thyme and broth and it should smell amazing. How does it smell in your kitchens right now? Delicious. Right. Nice. Very good. <laughs> that was a good voice. Who is that? That deep, dark voice. I need to record that one. Just delicious. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So now we're going to talk toppings for your burgers. Now the topping portion is totally up to you guys, but you should have your blackened seasoning. Okay. Oh, are you on the cutting board? Sorry. So you should have your blackened seasoning. That's going to go on the burgers itself. And this is kind of like a, like a Cajun-y, not spicy, but just like a, a nice seasoning okay i'm not sure 
how to describe it besides just Cajun-y, right? So that's going to be your flavor. So for me, I'm going to do a topping mixture of mayonnaise and Worcestershire. So <laughs> what? Yeah. And I'm going to top them with pickles. Okay. So I'm going to get a bowl and a little spoon. And what's everybody else doing for their toppings? I was kind of waiting for direction on that. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you want to follow along, if you've got, if you've got what I've got, <laughs> feel free to follow along. So I'm going to do like a, a nice little, a nice little splash of mayo. I'm only making two burgers. So if you're making four, you're going to want two nice splashes of mayo and a little bit of Worcestershire. Yeah. Okay. And we're just going to stir that up in there. Two piles. Of I need a little bit more mayo on my end. So you should get a nice, just like a darker brown mayo. This is what it's going to create, but it's going to create a nice smooth. And I like mayo with the, with the burgers just because that extra level of fat helps carry the flavor of the burgers. So that's why I like mayo. Some people like ketchup, mustard, that's cool too. Uh, but with this cajun -y burger, I want a little bit extra mayo to help carry that flavor of the Cajun seasoning and this burger blend all throughout the mouth, right? So that's, that's pretty much what our sauce looks like. And speaking of the burger blend, so the burger blend- I'll have that too. <laughs> so the burger blend is, uh, <laughs> I should say after years of just tasting and eating delicious burgers, I've come up with the perfect blend just for you. <laughs> so your burger blend is a mixture of choice brisket, uh, prime New York strip and filet mignon cuttings. Prime brisket is way too fatty. And when you grind it, it just doesn't get the right texture for it. So you want more of a choice brisket, um, which is still really fatty and you'll get a nice, nice, um, a nice fat content from, from that choice brisket. But once you mix that with the prime New York strip, you'll get a really intense beefy flavor and a nicer fat that grinds better. Okay. And the filet mignon was chosen just because every time I've ground filet mignon into burger meat, it just adds like a silky kind of flavor. I don't, and, and everybody loves filet mignon, right? So, so that's, that's the reason behind that blend. So our potatoes are cooking, so let's go ahead and prepare our burger balls. So, because while you're doing that, just put, how much Worcester did you add to the mayo? Um, I would say probably about a teaspoon. Okay, all right, thanks. Yeah. Now, if you're making, you know, if you're making four burgers, you might want to kind of double what I did there. Okay. Now, my burger meat is probably in a little bit of a different package than yours. That's okay. Don't worry. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and remove. And if you're making four burgers or two burgers, this process is the same. So take your big giant burger ball and you're just gonna cut it into half with your hands and you're gonna cut it in half again, okay? And then a key to a smash burger is when you roll your burgers into the ball, don't, squish it. Okay. Leave it kind of loose because when we go to smash them, you want all that meat to just spread all out over the place. So you'll just kind of roll it around to get a, a nice burger ball. Okay. Yes. For, for two burgers, do you need four patties? Yes. Or for two burgers? Okay. Yep. So two burgers. There should be two patties for every burger. So and they should, they should round out to about a quarter pound each. If, if you're weighing them, you don't have to though. Just kind of eyeball it because yeah. smash burgers, you know, they don't need to be like a, a Gordon Ramsay looking kind of thing. Uh, when you smash them down, the uglier they get, usually the more delicious they are. So, so you should have 
two burger bottles for each for each burger. There we go. Okay. Now I'm just going to wash my hands real quick. Feel free to do the same. And then uh, we're going to get our buns ready. Hey, Chris, the dogs are liking it too. They're under our feet smelling it. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> my, my dad has also been just been laying on the floor waiting for. Oh yeah. Did, drop off. Yeah. Tell him he said hello. I will. <laughs> Everybody says hello, Richard. See, this is a good time. This is fun, isn't it? It is. What's that? So my lovely assistant just said that it smells really good in the kitchen right now. How's your, how are your kitchen smelling? Really good. Awesome. So go ahead and bring your cutting board back. And we're going to get our buns ready. We've got to get our buns ready. I don't have the same buns as you guys. You guys have those really nice brioche buns that were made by Luminary Distilling in Erie. So they actually have their own bakery as well as a um, alcohol distillery and their bread is phenomenal. So we worked directly with them to make these uh, burger buns for you. We were impressed with the buns. They look wonderful. Yeah, you're, you're going to love them. They're going to really set this whole thing off. So so we're gonna go ahead and take our buns. Mine are pre-cut because they came in a bag. I don't know if there's a pre-cut either. But uh, now you don't have to do this exactly the same. I like to toast my buns with mayo on them. Um, some people use butter, some people just use oil. You're welcome to use anything that you like. I think when you toast a bun with a light layer of mayo, it just really crisps up, especially if you ever, if you ever made like grilled cheese with mayo instead of butter mind-blowingly different so you just want a little bit of mayo come on there we go <laughs> whoa <laughs> just throw your buns all over your counter with mayo <laughs> and just uh just spread them out it's okay if you don't have it totally covering your buns And you just want that layer of fat on there to toast your buns with. So you can kind of see what we're doing is we're layering in different levels of fat to every burger because fat carries the flavor. And if you're using oil, oil is also fat. Butter is also fat, obviously. So it's okay to use those two. The mayo is just going to carry it a little further. If you hate mayo, no big deal. <laughs> so we've got our buns ready. Now we're going to go ahead and preheat our pan that we're going to use to make the burgers. Okay. So I'm using this lovely carbon steel griddle. And if you're using a skillet, that is perfectly fine too. Okay. So we're going to let that preheat. And you don't need to add any oil to it unless you're using a stainless steel pan. If you're using a stainless steel pan, then you might wanna add a little bit of oil to the bottom of your pan, um, just so that the buns don't completely burn and stick to them, even though there is fat on the buns already. So while those, while that pan's heating up, we're gonna go back to our burger balls and grab your- This medium high or meat? Um, just medium is fine. Yeah. Medium. Grab okay. your, yeah. Grab your Gordon's blackened seasoning. Make sure it's open. There's probably a tabby thing if you haven't opened it yet. And you just want to put your, put your ball back in your hand and see, just dust them all up with your blackened seasoning and you want to cover them entirely. That's interesting. Yeah. So you should have like a little nacho cheese looking burger ball. Now, if you've ever cooked with blackened seasoning, a great way to do it is with butter on the pan first. Like if you're doing like a blackened steak or blackened salmon or blackened chicken, anything like that, we're not gonna do that um, just because butter is gonna burn really fast in this process of how we're using it. So, the seasoning is 
and there's enough fat in the burger already to kind of carry that seasoning for us. And if you do like a saltier burger, I, I love this blackened seasoning because it's not super salty. Um, if you do like a saltier burger, you can add salt to the burger as well, but not, a, not right now. So yeah, if you want to add salt, you can, but just be ready for that. And I'm going to wash my hands real, real quick again. And when do we get the smash up? We're just about to do it. <laughs> Ralph's iPad really wants to smash these burgers. <laughs> Are you, you going to use your iPad as a burger smasher? <laughs> okay, go ahead and take these over to your pan. And if you have a burger smasher, great. If you don't, um, a pair of, or just a spatula is great to smash them with. And if, you, if you're using the spatula method, you're gonna to wanna to use the tongs that we got out earlier to push down on the spatula, okay? So just to give you more leverage with the burgers, okay? So- Chris, did you, preheat that, did you preheat that, uh, that um, billet or- uh... Yes, yeah, it should be preheated. Okay. Oh, you know what? I didn't turn this light on. Let's turn this on and you'll be able to see this a little better. Yeah. There we go. All right. So we do want your pan to be really nice and hot, but we almost forgot to toast our buns. So let's bring our buns over and toast those first. Oh, toast them first. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we put the mayo on them. So it should sizzle when you put them down and give your buns a light press when you put them on the pan, just so that we get a nice coverage throughout the bun. And don't push down too hard because you'll burn your fingers. You can also use your spatula to do it if that helps you. So, and if your pan's as hot as mine, they might be, yeah, see, they're starting to look almost done already. Okay, keep them going. So have a nice sharp spatula ready. Okay. Now buns should be browning up. Real quick sip of water. These babies should be done. Yes, that is perfection right there. So nice golden brown crust on your buns. Uh, how's everybody's buns looking? I'm looking good, Chris. Good, good. Looking good. If you're gonna be cooking with me, you gotta have good looking buns. <laughs> Absolutely, and I, I did that, Chris. Okay, <laughs> and it's okay if your buns get a little smashed, like mine's getting a little smashed. Now the buns that you guys are using are much beefier than mine, so your buns is your bun should be prettier than mine. And then we're just right. going to put them aside or do you want them in yep, the oven? Ahead. What do you do? No, nah, go ahead and put them aside. If you've got your plates ready, um, you can go ahead and put your burger buns on your plate. Okay. Because once we're done with the burgers, hopefully the potatoes should be perfect. Because like I said, after doing this five or six or 12 times this month, this process seems to work really well, <laughs> the timing in between. So, all right, our pan is hot. Let's smash some burgers. Okay, now, depending on the size of your pan, you might just wanna cook one at a time or you can do two at a time. When you put it down, just let the ball sit there for a second and stick to the pan. Now, when you press your burger balls into the pan, you kind of want to push them around in a circle, kind of like this. And you should get a really nice sizzle. Let it sit there for a second and then slowly pick up your burger press, okay? It's okay if your burger sticks to your, whatever you're pressing with, 
That can happen. Just, just peel it back off and put it back on. Hey, Chris, is it okay? I'm assuming to use one of these deals. Uh, I can't see it. What are you using? All right, it's uh, it's like a weighted per press with a handle, and I'm assuming I can just like spray it with nonstick and drop it on. Yeah, you probably don't even need to spray it with nonstick, but if um, yeah. if you want to, that's that's totally up to you. Yeah. So now at this point, if you do want to add salt, you can. I'm just going to add a little bit of coarse kosher salt. And these burgers should cook up pretty quickly, so make sure you have your spatula ready. Ew, and have your cheese next to you as well. Okay. So you should have one piece of cheese for each burger patty. All right, now you know when to flip your smash burgers, excuse me, when you start to see, when they start to lift up kind of like this, or you start to see brown bitty edges start to pop up and they start to look like they're starting to get darker brown. Like that's, that's really what we want to see. You see how my burger is kind of, it's got some holes in it. That's from not um, smashing our burger ball together, which is allowed air to go under and create a crust underneath. So when your burgers kind of look like this, when they, you want to take your, your nice sharp spatula and get a nice scrape so you get all that crust and give them a flip. See how that blackened seasoning and the char is starting to appear? So you should have a nice little crust on that side of your burger. Beautiful. So and after you flip them, Go ahead and add your cheese. Oh, it's smelling good. All right, and now if you want, you can add some black pepper to your cheese. If you're Gordon Ramsay, you would add another pound of salt at this point. Once that cheese is melted, we're gonna stack them on top of each other and you're gonna transfer it right over to your bun. So, how's everybody doing? Awesome. All right. How's the everybody's cheese melting? Their burgers got a nice crust on them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, two at a time, though. So we've got. That's okay. I'm doing the same. We've got two, four, six more to do. <laughs> oh, nice. Not a problem. I'll just keep talking with you while you do it. So, go ahead. Once their uh, cheese is melting, those burgers are done and just kind of lay them on each other like so. And there we go, a beautiful double smash burger. And it's totally awesome if your burger meat hangs over your bun. <laughs> All right, okay. Now, before you go to mood, cook your other balls, take your spatula and kind of scrape away at the excess fat and oil that is in your pan. If you need to use a paper towel to soak it up, that's totally okay too. But what we don't want is a buildup of oil so that our burger meat doesn't stick to the pan. So we'll go ahead, add our balls. They should be sizzling nice. And time to press. Once again, kind of press in a circular motion if you can. Let the press sit on there for a second so that the, the meat sticks to the pan. And then you should be able to pull your press off. See how that's like really ugly? It's gonna be beautiful after it's cooked. Yeah. And then as soon as we're done here, we're gonna just take a peek at our potatoes in the oven and see what they look like. Yeah, there should be a, a little bit of liquid just kind of sizzling at the bottom of your pan. It should be 
If, you, if you're totally out of liquid, you can add a little bit of water or more chicken broth if you have it. Um, but if you've got a, if you've got a tiny little bit of like, looks like bubbly, it looks like bubbly crust at the bottom. That's good. Okay. Uh, just going to smash this out a little bit more. Put the burgers right on. One on top of each other first. <laughs> there we go. These burgers are looking good. Okay. How's everybody's burgers looking? Sound off. Whoa. Amazing. All right. All right. So we'll let that cheese melt and then we got a, another one. And don't worry, I won't take the bite out of my burger until everybody's ready. <laughs> uh -oh, <ours> fell over. <laughs> Did you, if you already ate yours, no problem. <laughs> uh. All right. If you're done, don't forget to turn off your pan because I always do. Ah. So, how's that look? Looks good, looks good. Now, we'll add our toppings. Now, I love raw onion on my burgers too. So, I'm not doing that today, but raw onion would be great if you have some. I should have said that earlier, but. Okay, now we've got our sauce. So we're just gonna add our sauce to our bun. Huh? I hear a lot of mmms going on. Is everybody, everybody's food is looking good, I hope? I am. I think. Anybody else yeah. doing different toppings for their burgers? What all is everybody doing with the, for their toppings? We're gonna do it the way you're doing it, Chris. Oh, cool. Okay. Myrtle, no onions. You? No onions for pickles. Ralph's iPad. You want pickles on yours? Yep. Okay. What about Amy and her crowd? We did the sauce too, and then we've got pickles, lettuce, tomatoes, onion. Nice. We're, we're going full force. Yeah, and sliced onion. Nice, I love it. Also. Ooh, mama, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, this is the epitome of what a smash burger should look like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, can you do this camera? Because it's so close. Wow. So that's what we should. Mm -hmm. We should see something greasy, something oozy, something mouthwatering, right? All right. Now move that to the side and we're going to check on our potatoes. So go ahead and grab a fork. And I'm going to move this camera back so everybody can kind of see how I do this. So grab a towel so you don't burn yourself. All right. <laughs> How's that look for everybody? Okay. So stick your fork in. It's kind of like cake, you know, pop it in there. If it doesn't, if it doesn't go all the way in easily, they need a few more minutes. Okay. See like that one's definitely done. That one's done. Okay. And we still have done. a lot of liquid in ours. Okay. We that's okay. Off the liquid or just take them out if they're done. No, go ahead and take them out if they're done. And then we'll use that liquid. So you're, Consider yourself lucky if you've got some liquid. Okay. All right. They should kind of look like scallops. Is that what everybody sees? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Kind of look like scallops. Yeah. Okay. So if you've got liquid in your pan, let's use it. So if you've got liquid in your pan, grab a towel, 
tilt it up and just grab that liquid and just kind of baste it over your potatoes. Now I barely have any left. And that should sizzle as soon as you put it on the potato. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So basically not only were they cooked in butter and broth in time, now they're bathed in it. Okay, that should be good. All right. So let's go ahead and now don't dig right into these potatoes because they're gonna be boiling lava hot. So <laughs> that's, that's what our top looks like. It only has got those brown bits on it because that came from basting. Um, and that's what my bottom looks like. Ooh. It's okay if your bottom stick to your pan a little bit, just kind of scrape it up. So there should be one potato per plate. Okay. All right, we're looking good. How's everybody looking? All right. Okay. <laughs> So if you're still making burgers, if you're still making burgers, no problem. Um, or if you're ready to eat, cool. Where, what's, everybody's, what's everybody's step at right now? I got two more burgers. <laughs> what's that? Just finishing up our third burger. Yeah. Nice. We're on our last burger. Nice. All right. So I like to cut my burger in half just because it allows you to take a bigger bite. <laughs> but you don't have to. You could just, you know. Now, what do I do with that fork? Here we go. So can, they, can you see the potato pretty good, Carly? Okay. So when you go to cut your potato, the fork just should just slice right down in and yeah. it should steam like crazy. So, so basically you've almost created the inside of a baked potato, but it is chock full of flavor of chicken broth butter and thyme instead. And then when you combine that flavor with the flavor of the crispiness from the top and the bottom, you're gonna be You'll be making these later for dinner too. But they're so easy, aren't they? Delicious. Ah, all right. Yeah, if you're if you're ready to eat, feel free to go ahead and take a bite. If not, I'm just gonna hang in it and wait, wait for you, wait for the other guys to finish their fourth burgers. So what do you guys think so far of this whole process? Are we moving along pretty quick enough for you? Yeah, working good. All right. And um, is it, my direction's been super easy? Yes. Yes. Very easy. Very easy. Awesome. Food's outstanding. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> Delicious. Yeah, we got good. some people eating already. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, man. I, I just want to eat. Can I eat? No. <laughs> I'm going to wait for the slow pokes with the four burgers. Okay, so probably just going to, oh, I'll eat the half. What am I thinking? I was going to eat just a quarter. <laughs> so we did the potatoes. We did the burgers. Any questions on smash burgers? Like how did everybody smash your burgers? Did you all have a burger smasher or did you use your spatula? What, do you, what did you do? I used a spatula. It was a little bit difficult because the spatula is kind of small. But otherwise, ah, yes. The, we got we got to get bigger. Sure. Yep. Use the bottom of a plate. Ah, that's handy. That's a good idea. On TikTok, they would call that a hack. <laughs> <laughs> I would just think that that's just smart. <laughs> Eats trick. That was Grandma Eats. Oh, that was Grandma Eads' trick was to use a plate. Now, Grandma Eads made smash burgers? Yeah. Whoa. She's been making 
<laughs> she made them for years and didn't even know what they were. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. 102 years old, making smash burgers. <laughs> wow. All right. What about... Uh... How are the potatoes? Is, you, is anybody tasting them yet? I'm, I got to try one of these potatoes because these look, these look like maybe the best I've ever made them. The, the potatoes are awesome. We're awesome. going to make a lot of these. <laughs> they're so easy and they're so fancy. And the more you make them, you can kind of perfect getting them into a perfect circle. Um, I don't try to do that with, you know, just for this process because we need to move a little quicker. But uh, as you, the more you make them, you're going to want to try to make them more perfect looking. That's just the nature of cooking. Mm. Very good. Oh, yeah. Cool. Great Blow on that. <laughs> really cool. Yeah, in a very a nice impactful way for a potato too, like something totally different. A lot of people are just making baked potatoes or even like uh, what what's those sliced like au gratin potatoes that's a little bit fancy. Um, but this is so much simpler. And you need like three ingredients. Yeah. All right, everybody, who, who hasn't tasted a burger yet? <laughs> My dad just said me. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that potato's got great flavor. Okay, you wanna switch to this camera? You gotta look at that. So that's another reason I like to cut it in half as well. Wow. Is then you see that cross section. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm digging in, folks. That's so good. <laughs> Very good, Chris. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, my chewing isn't too loud for the microphone. You guys are just hearing me. <laughs> what are you making next week? Can't hear you over my own chewing. Mm, yeah, I hope I'm hearing everybody's chewing and it's lovely. Music to my ears. <laughs> I'm just grabbing another plate here. Chris, what are we Thank making you. next week? Chris. So the, um, the next one will be late February. And it will be with uh, Chef Martin Firestone. So you're going to actually be cooking... Sorry, I just wanted to swallow that for a second. You're gonna actually be cooking with a professional chef and it's going to be a steak meal that we haven't put together the, the whole meal yet, but it's probably going to be an epic steak meal. Um, if I had to guess, it'll probably be an amazing ribeye. Yes, um, but he is probably, uh, I, I did a video a while back on my YouTube channel for my Steak Masters series. And he was the first one I featured and then I've got another one I'm featuring in a couple, a couple more weeks. But if you go back and watch that video on my YouTube channel, it's called a uh, uh, steak cooking tips from a steak master. Um, so you'll get to see kind of what he does ahead of time to get some more, more tips before we even start to actually cook with him. But that'll be, that'll be the February burger box. And uh, yeah, so we'll be, we'll either be cooking them in a skillet, probably in a skillet if I had to guess, just because that, that that'll kind of relate to everybody. Um, but if you, you wanted to cook with your grill, you could definitely cook with your grill. So that'll be, that'll be a fun one. And I'll be kind of more on the side of the scenes with the camera work and just kind of facilitating questions and stuff like that. So that's kind of the whole fun of the whole Birger Box thing is you cook with me sometimes and I just kind of work my way through the kitchen and make mistakes. And that's how I learn. And I just watch a lot of videos. Whereas you have, then I'll bring on other people that have decades of experience cooking in all different levels of kitchens in different cuisines and you'll be cooking live with them as well so to give you kind of a, a future of what beer box looks like next month is chef martin firestone and then the uh march will be back to just me and it'll probably be something like a salmon dish um i'm not i'm not super sure yet um and then the month of april will be chef john boquin from the skunk and goat tavern in downtown northeast 
So uh, I'm not sure what he'll do. If I had to guess, it'll probably be some fancy Asian dish. Um, but I, I can't put words in his mouth. But um, And then after that, I'm not sure what I'll cook. But then the month of June will be uh, Dina from Dina's Dominican restaurant in the flagship city food hall in downtown Erie. Now she is from the Dominican Republic. So it's going to be a blast to do that one and food that you've never made ever, you know? So it'll be it's trying to give you a whole range of different, uh, different ways to cook and different techniques to learn. So that sound fun to everybody. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Chris, my, uh, my, awesome. sous, chef, my sous chef has a, an endorsement here. Oh, look at this kid. Oh, what do you think? Yeah. Let yeah, me come, I'm like going to come around and see the computer. She says, <laughs> okay. Hey, what do you think? Good. Really good. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> now, d- does she get one whole burger to herself? I don't know. Are you going to yeah. eat that whole thing? She got a whole one. She says, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> what do you so, do with this, Chris? Oh, what's he got? He said, oh, what do I do with empty this? Plate. Empty plate. What do you do with that? You fill it back up again, you dummy. <laughs> All right. Well, what questions do you guys, what comments do you have? What suggestions do you have? <laughs> for 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 this whole process i'd love to to hear what everybody thinks so can we buy the bearder blend at gordon's yeah so you can buy this entire box in the in the near like the upcoming future if you want to do this box or yeah you'd be able to buy the actual blend in the very near future as well okay so are you planning on doing anything like i think this would be like a really fun um like you know couples thing for like a Friday evening or something like we could probably get a group setting and do like a broad, broadcast from you know central location or something. Sure. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> yeah, I'm up to all sorts of ideas. The whole live cooking thing is so interesting. And something because of this that I invested in, you know, this specific gear to be able to broadcast to Twitch, to YouTube, to Facebook, all at the same time if we want to. Um, to change camera angles, use multiple cameras so that we can, you know, keep things moving appropriately and quickly. Alex and I got these as gifts for brothers and sister-in-law, sisters and brothers-in-law. And okay. um, it, we, we're all here right now. Mm-hmm. And what a great time. We, awesome. you know, this, this was so much fun to cook together and, you know, just enjoy it because that's something we love to do. We wanted to share it with the rest of them. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the whole point of this whole thing is just like people cooking with people. I don't think that happens at all, even at home anymore in a lot of places. So just trying to put that out there. Now you're not just cooking at home, you're cooking with other people from, you know, potentially uh, around the country. So that's that's cool. And with you giving me that um, picture in order to put it on a magnet to give it to them, yeah, you know, yeah. having having it on their fridge, they kept looking at it every day, and you know, hey, <laughs> it's just about time, you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> That's so hilarious. It was so much fun. <laughs> I don't know. If That's know. awesome. You you just teased them for a whole month, is what you did. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> But it, it worked That's, out really well. Yeah, That's a lot of fun. Great job, Chris. I think this was really awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Any suggestions that I could do? Anything I could do better? As we, because this this is the first time, so a lot of it's still kind of rough, and it I mean, it literally took me five to six different tries to get to here. <laughs> but I know there's a long way to go. So any suggestions well, anybody has? It was really yummy. Welcome. I must say, it really <laughs> yummy. Awesome. Awesome. The, uh, the burger is quite large. Oh yeah, yeah, it's no joke. Yeah, it's not. Uh, you can, and you can very, definitely. And very fun, very fun to do. And Uncle Jim, Uncle Jim did a good job. All right. So, Chris, Jill, Jim my wife had one job. suggestion. I don't know. I don't know how hard it would be, but she had suggested maybe during the live, if there's a way to have sort of the steps as you go, paste it up on the screen. So, like what you've done in case you're trying to catch up. Great idea. I can absolutely do that. Yep. We can put uh, lower thirds instructions right over what I'm doing. I just have to make those ahead of time. But yeah, absolutely. That's that's definitely in the future. Anybody else? 
I think having on the recipe card um, kind of like ways to prepare so you're ready at the one o'clock time. Um, Cause okay. we, we fortunately did already preheat the oven and stuff, but that could have really set us way back. Right. Right. And, and I like to, I, I kind of thought about that and I was like, Oh, I should, probably should have said that, but at least doing the prep work kind of gave us a little bit of time, but yeah, I, I'll, that's, that's, that's great. I'll definitely make sure that the, every single instruction that could be possibly needed <laughs> needs to be put in that initial email. Yep. Anybody else? All right. Everybody's just eating, I'm guessing. So it's, so it's, 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 it's the only thing the Ravellos will say here is that uh, go birds. We got to get off this call and go here for the eat. <laughs> okay. You, you guys go enjoy yourself. Enjoy the football game. Thank you very much. I appreciate you all. And I will hopefully see you on the next Burger Box live. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Chris. Great, great job. Thanks, Chris. Nice job. Get out awesome of here. Job. I'm done talking to you. No. Okay. <laughs>